Hi, everyone. Um, good to see you all. So uh, let us get started here. We are going to talk today about Giraffe and uh, Giraffe's recent move to run on Yarn. And uh, here we go, I think. There we go. My name's Eli Reisman, and uh, I've been a uh, Giraffe committer for about a year and uh, PMC member. Uh, committer on Tajo, I wrote the initial port to Yarn, so you can address your angry letters to me. And uh, a bunch of the draft committers are working on a draft in action book for Manning. And uh, let's see here. I have uh, been able to get involved with draft and Apache projects in general with the generous, wonderful support of so many people and great institutions, and uh, those are a few of them right there. Wanted to make sure and thank. Um, I am right now a software engineer at Etsy.com. It's a wonderful place that uh, enables people who are not so technical, although if you're technical, you're welcome to, to uh, sell handmade and vintage items of all sorts the world over, and uh, it is a really wonderful place to be. Been very happy there so far. Just started a few months ago. Good stuff. And uh, here's an example of some of the things that they sell. We have our uh, bow tie with the grumpy cat. We have a uh, handmade teapot, and uh, both handmade and vintage. Over here, we have the uh, antique typewriter that has been uh, converted to a USB keyboard for your computer. Also, uh, Windows 95 compatible. So uh, they have a wonderful blog called Code as Craft uh, that I recommend. Definitely uh, interesting reading. We like to measure stuff. We like Hadoop. All right, let's talk about giraffe. Let us talk about giraffe. There we go. All right. So key points we're going to cover. Uh, what is Apache giraffe? Why do you need it? Good stuff. Uh, we're going to get a little example of why you need it in between there, and then we're going to move on to giraffe on MapReduce, uh, some of the sort of pros and cons, mostly cons today, because we are moving on to giraffe on Yarn. And finally, we're going to give a little bit of a roadmap of uh, what other wonderful things that Yarn is going to allow us to do and that are a real natural fit for giraffe. So here we go. I'm actually going to read this bullet point verbatim because it's a mouthful, but this is actually a pretty good description here to get us started. Drafts a framework for processing offline, ah, there, I already did it, for performing offline batch processing of semi-structured graph data on a massive scale. So you take away the word graph, it starts to sound a lot like Hadoop. Uh, in fact, it is trying to do something to solve a class of problems or allow you to solve those problems that Hadoop has some trouble with, and we will hear about that. It's loosely based on Google's Preggle, uh, and uh, in fact, it's getting to the point where it's loose enough that uh, who knows how much longer we'll be saying that. Uh, we've added a lot of uh, things and features to Giraffe that uh, weren't in the original Preggle paper, and, uh, but seem to be working real well. So on we go. Giraffe performs iterative calculations on top of an existing Hadoop cluster. So pretty much you run your Hadoop jar, uh, just like you would any normal Hadoop job, and uh, Giraffe takes it from there. We use Zookeeper to enforce uh, atomic barrier weights, but also to perform our leader election, and uh, it is kind of the main thing besides Maven that you will actually have to install on your machine before you can get going with, uh, with a Giraffe job. Uh, the rest of it, your Hadoop cluster is good to go. Uh, we don't need anything else. Come prepared. All right. We have a vibrant community that is uh, donating lots of time and lots of great code. Uh, Facebook, Avery Ching, our fearless leader, uh, began the project. I think he actually introduced it here in 2011. And uh, I have been at Hortonworks and LinkedIn and now at Etsy doing a lot of uh, work on Giraffe. There's uh, great folks at Twitter and of course the Apache community is uh, involved. So we got all sorts of people. You get on that user list, uh, you will get answers, you will see discussions. Uh, this is definitely a project that is uh, in motion. All right, so Giraffe implements the BSP, Bulk Synchronous Parallel Programming Model, and uh, I am going to resist the urge to go into detail on that. There are many other uh, great talks, and you can get the slides. You can see them on YouTube. Uh, the slides are on our website, which I'll show you later. Um, we are going to talk about Yarn today, but it's hard to resist because the API is really clean, and best of all, in BSP, it's really easy to reason about tough problems, and uh, 
the gist of it is you're going to write your business logic as if you were thinking of the processes, the message passing, the uh, work that has to be done from a single vertex in a single iteration of an iterative calculation. So it is usually pretty easy to code up uh, really cool stuff. Onward. Okay, so it makes iterative data processing more practical for Hadoop. We will see why that is in a minute. Uh, we avoid a lot of costly sort of uh, I.O. bound operations that Hadoop needs to do in each iteration. And uh, also, Hadoop doesn't really have any MapReduce, I should say. It doesn't really have any native message passing concept. Uh, that's not really what it's about, as I'm sure you all know. So Giraffe has to sort of go it alone and do some things uh, to make that happen. And we will see why that makes it a practical fit for MapReduce, but not really an ideal fit. Okay, so as I said, each cycle uh, of an iterative calculation is gonna be a full MapReduce job. Let's see what that means with an example, and it wouldn't be a talk about giraffe without a PageRank example. So PageRank is all about measuring the relative importance of a document within a set of documents, and uh, here's the quick gist of it. We all start out uh, with our, and we have a tiny little three-node graph here just to keep it simple. Uh, we start out with everyone having the same page rank. Each vertex will distribute a equal portion of that page rank to its neighbors. So you can see with those out edges, and we have a uh, unweighted directed graph in this case. Uh, so each one is propagating that page rank out. The ones with uh, one neighbor are just sending their whole page rank value, and uh, the one there with two is sending half to each neighbor. And uh, I believe the technical term is link juice. That is link juice. So here we go. Now, a very simple uh, lightweight calculation goes on in which all of that, uh, those incoming values are summed at each vertex, uh, multiplied by a weight factor, and we add in a small adjustment uh, that basically uh, encapsulates the chance that someone will just randomly happen upon that vertex and uh, not because it has lots of edges pointing to it. And uh, it's a pretty cheap calculation, keep that in mind. What we see after the first iteration is these values are no longer even. Uh, in page rank, rank's kind of a funny word for it because we want more value, more value means more importance, but there is no absolute ranking there, there is no number one, number two, number three. Uh, in this case, because it's a tiny graph, it turns out there is a number one, a number two, and a number three. You can see right there, uh, the one on the bottom is doing the worst. And we just keep repeating until basically we converge. And what convergence is, is from one iteration to the next, the uh, change of page rank that occurs with this shuffling of uh, link juice is so small that we don't care anymore and it's sort of stabilized. Okay, so, uh, spoiler alert, what we get here is the ones with all those in edges coming, that's going to be the one with the highest rank and so on. So uh, we see that, that fella that had two edges pointing to it that is the one that is definitely gonna end up with the most rank. Uh, we wanna look at that another way. There you go. So, yes. Yeah, uh, three, I love it. All right. So, let's see how this would work if you were just implementing it on raw MapReduce, and uh, in fact, many of you probably have seen this uh, little trick before. But here's what we're gonna do, and I think it'll illustrate well why MapReduce is not a great fit for this class of problems. So we start out, we load in our graph data, and traditionally that's gonna mean keys and values, of course. Key is gonna be vertex ID, and the value is gonna be a list of out edges, and then the page rank tacked on there. And uh, what we're gonna do next is uh, the mappers are all going to emit the full graph state. Whenever they encounter a key, such as we just saw with all of that graph state, it's just gonna pass that on verbatim, but before it does, it's going to emit another set of keys and values for each of those out edges that is uh, pointing to a neighbor, it's going to emit a key with that neighbor, and it's going to emit a value, which is the sh proportion of the page rank that it's sharing that we saw earlier. And uh, that means we're going to get an extra amount of data equal to the number of edges, which in large graphs is, is quite a bit. And all of that, including the whole graph state, is going to move into the sort and shuffle. Oh, and there we're going to see, as you all know, that is a heavyweight operation. There's a lot of uh, I.O. bound network nonsense going on. We don't want it. It takes forever. Okay, moving on. 
when we get to the reduce stage, we're going to sum up all those page rank values. Uh, we are going to then apply that same little formula we saw earlier, and we are going to tack that on as the new page rank, and we are going to omit the entire graph back to disk. And then worst of all, we're going to start over again, and we're going to load it all again. And that was just one iteration. So in conclusion, why is it bad? Not only is it awkward to reason about, awkward enough that I'm told this is a good uh, job interview question, and uh, worse, it's I.O. bound. Despite simple core business logic, we're just doing a little bit of adding, a little tiny bit of dividing and some multiplying. Come on. So what does Giraffe do? Giraffe starts with a mapper. Uh, we hijack these mappers from Hadoop. We don't use them in the normal way. The mapper is pretty much our whole uh, life cycle of our job. And uh, in that respect, Uzi and uh, a few other tools now do the same thing. But uh, we'll see what happens here. So we are going to load in the data just once. And we're going to maintain code data locality whenever possible. Uh, we aren't going to choose where the host is but we are, or where the uh, tasks are hosted. But if there happens to be data from the graph that's there, we're going to load that rather than trying to pipe it in through the network. And you're welcome, by the way. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is perform all of the iterations right there on that mapper. And the only thing to slow us down is the time it takes all of these map tasks to complete one iteration, cycling through, running the business logic on all those vertices, which generally isn't too long, and uh, then how long it takes to coordinate with Zookeeper that, in fact, everybody's done, we're ready to move on to the next iteration. Uh, you can optionally spill to disk, but we keep the data in memory, so it's nice and fast. And uh, when you do spill to disk past a certain threshold, a lot of good work has been put into Giraffe over the past few months here. Uh, to keep that disk access linear and not random. So it's still pretty fast, I'm told. Haven't played with that part, but I hear very good things, and a lot of work's gone into it. OK, at the end, we write out that graph data with our results, and we're done. So that's great, and, it, and it's worked, and it's worked well. Uh, it's in use in production. It's under heavy development, as you saw, by a lot of companies, but it's not ideal. We could, we could probably do a bit better here. So. Let's review. Draft MapReduce, we have uh, some problems. We have to call up all of these mappers to hold our data in memory, to run our business logic. And as you know, we have to basically choose a heap size. We have to resource them. And it's global. That it, One size is going to have to fit all. And uh, that's tricky, because one of the common failure cases with Giraffe that I saw when I was running it at scale is that uh, super nodes of the graph, nodes that are highly connected, uh, which will give a data scientist a headache and also give folks writing tools a headache, uh, what happens is the unlucky worker that ends up with one of those uh, data partitions with some super nodes is just getting flooded with all sorts of messaging. They are uh, overwhelmed, and you get some out of memory problems, and it's crash and burn, uh, while the others just go on fine. So that's no good. Uh, worse yet, sometimes you would like to do some things to uh, be clever about handling that situation and to recognize that you are dealing with a graph with some super nodes and you really can't do anything about it because you have no control over which host your tasks end up on in the cluster. So they're just kind of everywhere. And uh, worse yet, we have a uh, situation where mappers are scheduled uh, in, in a way that assumes it's a Hadoop job. And normally, that's a wonderful thing. If you're on a busy cluster, there's many tasks uh, requesting to be scheduled. What's going to happen is they're going to dole out those mappers piecemeal, and everybody gets a few in general. And uh, what happens to Giraffe, because it wants to run in memory, it's going to wait for all of those mappers to be available. And sometimes that's just not going to happen. And uh, there's not a real clean way currently that Giraffe uh, deals with that situation. It kind of gets in trouble. So often, uh, when Giraffe is used at scale, it's run on a not very busy cluster. And some of us don't have that luxury. So last of all, uh, slots. Reduce slots, map slots, this abstraction is no good for us. We just like those mappers. It's a real shame when uh, all those reduced slots are sitting there and uh, we could be taking advantage of those resources, and the cluster doesn't really know or know how to give them to us and doesn't want to. So that's really unfortunate. Let's take a look at Yarn. Uh, Yarn, as you saw Bobby's wonderful talk a minute ago, it is uh, yet another resource negotiator, but it's a good one. Uh, it's Hadoop's next-gen job management platform. I don't want to say that it is a job tracker. I want to say it replaces the job tracker. 
uh, it, it splits up those duties of uh, scheduling and uh, monitoring and uh, application management, and it allows you a lot more flexibility of what you do with your Hadoop cluster. And uh, it is general purpose. Powers MapReduce 2, this is a uh, problem for folks that have used Giraffe. I see it on the mailing list all the time that folks get confused. They say, I'm running on Yarn, and I'm having trouble, and uh, they're not sure which version of Yarn they're, they're actually using, and the problem is, that Giraffe has natively supported for a long time uh, running on any version of Hadoop, Yarn or non-Yarn, using MapReduce v1 or v2. Because the API is so similar, uh, as long as we go through MapReduce, it's going to work. And it works good, but the problem is you're in that MapReduce paradigm, and all the problems we saw on the last slide uh, are going to occur. So you don't really get any advantages either. Uh, so finally, uh, Yarn is general purpose. We don't have to worry about that anymore. We can get the cluster to do what we want. And uh, last one is it offers you fine-grained control over uh, per task, keep, uh, host location, anywhere you want to uh, place your tasks, how you, what you want them to be doing, you have control over that. Now, if you want the resource manager to handle that for you, it will. But if you don't, it doesn't have to. And, and there are some things we might want to do with Giraffe and uh, already want to do that would require that. So it's kind of a good fit. Let's take a look here at uh, this familiar diagram. Uh, some of you probably saw that in some other talks today. This is probably the one confusing part uh, about understanding the YARN architecture. From a tool perspective, if you're writing tools, if you're porting a tool such as Giraffe, uh, that square there, the three squares, the one in the middle, the red oval, application master, that is really where you're going to spend a lot of your time. What, what's going to happen there is uh, that is the sort of uh, master node for your application, and it's going to launch, it's going to manage the life cycle, it's going to communicate with the health, anything you want it to do uh, to run your tasks, to, off, to ask the resource manager to schedule your tasks. That's really the new brains of your operation. Uh, the client, on the other hand, over here, who's all alone and on that side of the diagram looks kind of important, is less important. Pretty much what the client's going to do to initiate an application is just to ask the resource manager, will you launch my application master? And from there, the application master is going to do everything. And uh, it's just maybe, if you'd like it to, report back to the client how things are going. So uh, everything happens at the application master. And uh, the resource manager will uh, act in this diagram. You can kind of see it resembles a job tracker sort of activity, where it will reach out to those node managers. It'll ask them, do you have what's called a container of the right heap size? Uh, where can we put uh, this task? If, if you want to be on a certain node, you, you know, it has to check with that one and make sure, do we have the resources for you? And then it will give you back the tasks you want, and you can populate them however you like. And uh, moving on here, it's a natural fit. Look at that, it's adorable. Okay. So, giraffe with yarn. As I already said, it's a little confusing because we've always been able to run on yarn, uh, but through MapReduce and through the MapReduce interface. So since our 1.0 release earlier this year, we have had a pure yarn implementation, which is to say there's nothing MapReduce about it. We are running on bare elephant, and uh, it works. So at first, we are supporting the 2.0.3 and trunk uh, versions, but it turns out there is a patch in review right now, and it works, that uh, will run 2.0.4 and 2.0.5 uh, versions of yarn. So that's out there. And last of all, what I was trying to do with this port is to make sure that uh, I, I did it in as clear a way. There's a lot of documentation in the code, a lot of, lot of sort of comments in the code. I tried to make it really clear what's going on because I wanted this to be a good template for other people to use to port projects. One of the problems for Yarn right now is there aren't a lot of projects that are really ported to run on it, and uh, that's a shame. And I think uh, when you look at distributed shell, some of the things that come with it, they're great, they work, but they aren't doing a very difficult job. There's not really a concept of life cycle there. You know, you ask it, it sends you back your information, you're done. So what we kind of wanted to do was take an application that was a little more complicated, a little more robust, had a life cycle, and give a good example of what that looks like on Yarn. And hopefully we did that. Again, address your criticisms here. So uh, the Yarn application master, it allows us to bootstrap draft jobs in a more stable way. Uh, what I'm referring to there is that when we launch all those mappers on Hadoop, like I was saying earlier, you might not get all the ones you want right away. And uh, by checking from the application master to see if that stuff is available at this moment, 
we have a much better way of failing fast, of giving more intelligent, uh, less spooky and strange error messages, and generally making sure that Giraffe can run on the cluster when it's that busy uh, at the moment you want to launch the task. So that's a plus. Uh, second point is ZooKeeper. We launch our own instance of ZooKeeper, or we reach out and connect with the one that's on your existing Hadoop uh, cluster. But uh, once again, we've, we're already up on some mappers when we do that. And so when it blows up, uh, and, you, and I just saw another message on the user boards this week, and believe me, there are a lot of them, people get very confused about why that is. Uh, in some cases, people have just forgotten to install ZooKeeper. In some cases, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly in that stack trace, but they didn't, they didn't dig through, and it's nice and confusing. So we don't want that. Uh, what we would like to do is move that to the application master, where, again, we can launch that ZooKeeper, we can connect with ZooKeeper, and if there's some kind of problem, we can die right there with a nice, clear message. Uh, that's real low-hanging fruit, and it's right there. Uh, next thing, of course, is the, the UI. Uh, we have always traditionally piggybacked, and if you've tried out Giraffe before, we've piggybacked on the sort of uh, Hadoop and Job Tracker UIs. And it works, but it's a little annoying because it doesn't really uh, give you much of an idea of what's going on with Giraffe. Uh, the way it measures progress in the mappers is goofy, doesn't really work, and, and uh, it's just sort of a nice workaround that worked well enough that no one's fixed it yet. And uh, we would like to fix it. Now that we are on J Yarn and we have uh, no concept of Job Tracker uh, it's, or anything MapReduce going on, there's really no reason to bother with that, and we can have our own UI that really gives a little better idea of what Giraffe is doing. So that, too, low-hanging fruit, ready to go. Now, a little more pie in the sky, some things that uh, we, would, we have sort of discussions in the community going on and that I am interested in would be, uh, of course, resourcing different tasks differently. So uh, if we know that we've got a super node ending up in a data partition in a certain task, we need that to be a super task. It better have a lot of heap. It better be well-resourced. Uh, we can have a failure story there. It's good stuff. Okay, next up, uh, we might want to spawn or retire tasks in the middle of an iteration, in the middle of a, of a uh, computation. So if we had uh, the first uh, super step or the first iteration of a calculation begins, and it's moving along fine, and that, that node ends up with a uh, super node, and it's having trouble, it might just stop calculating at 80% uh, heap used, at 90%, and say, I'm done, I'm waiting. Everyone else gets to the uh, zookeeper enforced barrier and is waiting, and at that point, those tasks can go ahead and uh, ask the, the uh, application master to give them another task. It can redistribute those partitions. Those tasks can complete. And for the rest of the application run, every iteration, we have enough, enough tasks to uh, make it happen. So that would be a, a huge plus that uh, Yarn can offer us. And um, the other sort of uh, pie in the sky things I'd love to see is that uh, the application master makes it easy for us to add roles to Giraffe that aren't there now. Right now, we have master and worker. Uh, all of the aggregation, which is where we send local data to be aggregated globally at the master and then available on the uh, next iteration for all of the individual tasks to look at, those go right through the same tasks that are doing the processing, running the business logic, and uh, that can be tough because there are all, a lot of applications that are in use uh, places and that folks are playing with, places like Facebook, where the aggregators are moving a lot of data. It's not just some primitives, uh, it's uh, sizable. And so we would like to maybe have some tasks that are dedicated to picking up that data, um, possibly in a tree-like structure, and moving it to the master that have their own heap, their own resources, and are doing nothing but that. That would be great. Um, one controversial idea that I still think has some merit is uh, some data pre-sampling. We could use some tasks to sample the data at the beginning to find those super nodes and to uh, cache that information for later. Why? Well, say you're dealing with a social graph. If uh, Biebs was popular last week, he's probably still popular next week. That's the way it is. So you could make some pretty good guesses and might not have to do that pre-scan very often to uh, get at least a fair share of your super nodes for a while, running those jobs again, even on updated graph data, and uh, put them in a situation where they're not going to ruin the computation and uh, run out of memory. All good stuff. Okay, a lot of new developments I just wanted to share, been very recent, but uh, have been talked about for a long time and are going to do a lot for Giraffe, and also, uh, by, with added flexibility, uh, sort of pair well with the, our new yarn setup. Uh, recently, after much discussion, I think even maybe a year of discussion, we have decoupled, finally, the uh, vertex, which is the uh, abstraction for managing your state, uh, from the actual business logic, the compute method that we were using to run 
that, uh, to transform that vertex to process messages to send messages. Now, uh, computations can be plugged in each iteration. So if you have the kind of computation that is not gonna do the same thing every iteration, you can just go ahead and swap those out as you like, and that is really powerful. Uh, it allows a lot of different kinds of things to be done that uh, were awkward with Giraffe before. Doable, but you sort of had to jury-rig it in the code and it made things a little verbose. Uh, the other really cool thing that happened very recently because of that is we were able to add uh, scripting starting with Jython. So you can use Jython now to write your business logic and you're up and running. If you have uh, input formats that already are, are there and ready to go or the ones supplied with your app are working for you, that's all you need to do. So very cool. And uh, we got a new website, Fresh Docs. We got a new release, 1.1. .1. Uh, book is upcoming and uh, the community is very active. So this is a great time to get involved. And like I said, by trying to make the yarn port uh, a great template and example, we were also trying to sort of leave some holes where it's pretty obvious where some of this stuff could be done, where it was pretty confusing before. And part of the port was in fact just doing some refactoring on Giraffe itself to separate out the Giraffe code from where it was touching the MapReduce uh, API directly. By, by sort of modularizing that, we've been able to make a ton of progress. And uh, we made it very easy for people to add features, I think, without uh, having to dig around in the weeds and, and touch a bunch of code that uh, might cause problems. So it's never been easier to get involved either. This is our website, and uh, down below is our mailing list. Like I said, new website, and there's a lot of great links with uh, other talks with slides much fancier than mine that go into great detail on the API, uh, which is good because I'm not doing that today. And uh, like I said, that is one of the real selling points. It's what sold me on Giraffe, so I recommend you check it out. And uh, in addition, some of the newer features are much better documented. And uh, so that's basically the talk. And uh, if you would like to ask me some questions, then I'm happy to take them. So uh, how long did it took you to, to port to Yarn? Uh, I did an internship at Hortonworks, uh, I think between December and uh, the end of March of this year, and uh, that is when I did it. And it was supposed to be a 20-hour uh, a week uh, internship, that's all I'll say. Uh, it was more than that. But it was a wonderful <laughs> experience. It's a great company, and uh, they were really supportive and made it really easy. And where else would you want to be when you're trying to learn about Yarn and uh, learn about porting an application like this? Um, so it was, a, it was just a great experience all around. But yeah, it was about three months, and uh, it was, uh, I think, probably two months of that were spent intensely on Giraffe. And, uh, and a lot of that was, again, just sort of refactoring some things in Giraffe. Uh, the Yarn part was not that hard. I know that uh, Yarn has a reputation, and, it, and it's not completely undeserved that while it gives you all this freedom, it doesn't do a lot for you. That application master, a lot of the uh, sort of slick features you would expect, uh, you, you have to either implement those uh, or find a way to handle them. And so uh, there's, there's sort of a double-edged sword there, but I'll tell you, it's, it's pretty easy to deal with. And so uh, I would recommend, again, take a look at the code. Um, it's, it, Really uh, having some examples out there, you could probably take a project and, and port it over in a lot less time than that. So, yeah, please do. Um, does the port use the recent Application Master uh, client libraries? Uh, you know, it uses, it uses the newer, it, it was on uh, 2.0.3, so it straddles the fence. Uh, it uses some of them, and then others it wasn't using. And uh, that's another thing we have a ticket for, but it, it works the same right now. Um, yeah, that would not be a hard thing to do, and that's, that's floating around out there. But it uses, I believe it uses the ones uh, for the resource manager, but for the application manager, uh, I believe not. Okay, yeah. cool, thanks. Yep. Can you uh, speak to some of the specific technical challenges that you uh, had writing your app, app master? Yeah, um, I think, let's see. Uh, there were a few. Um, I think part of it was that there, the, again, the example, the distributed shell that I was working from mostly, uh, there's things it just doesn't need to be able to do. So there were some problems I had uh, where, I, where I sort of had to play with it to figure out 
how can I manage lifecycle best? Um, I remember there were some problems with uh, loading in libraries, the, using the new uh, local resource uh, mechanism as opposed to uh, sort of the distributed cache API everyone's used to. Uh, that was kind of tricky. But, you know, none of it was that bad. Um, I think as Yarn gets better documented, and uh, I know I've been working on some of that, and um, I was talking to Hitesh about that, and uh, I think it's going to get easier and easier to learn what you need to learn to be effective with Yarn. And I think that's some of what's held people back, is that the documentation is thorough, but I think there weren't a lot of examples of the kind of real world things you need to do to get an application running on Yarn. Um, could you please e explain more about the super node and the super task? Yes. Thanks. Well, it's all vaporware right now. Uh, this is something that's being discussed in the community. My goal was to, again, provide a really good template of uh, how you could port a, an application to Yarn, but I was not in a position uh, in the Apache community to make those decisions about how we would then change Giraffe uh, to take advantage of Yarn better. So a lot of the ideas I presented here are ideas that we're tossing around, but we haven't implemented or even decided on which ones we're going to do and how we're going to prioritize them. And, and part of that is that uh, a lot of the folks that are using Giraffe in production and that are putting a ton of dev cycles into it right now are still running on clusters that are MapReduce version 1. So there are things that we have to be careful about doing uh, too quickly because it might mess with their functionality. Uh, we use some munging in the code so that we could introduce some things that are radically different than what goes on in the MapReduce version 1. But the trend lately in Giraffe has been to try and clean that up and eliminate it. We want the code base to be as consistent as possible. Um, so there's, there's some things that we might do. And as time goes by, I think uh, some of those are just going to be become so advantageous that they're going to happen anyway. But for now, uh, it's sort of in the discussion stage. Uh, and again, jump in. Uh, I think uh, everyone is. Uh, Welcome in the Apache community, and, and uh, everyone should, everyone's voice should be heard. And uh, I think the more people make noise about it, the more attention it'll get. And uh, you know, when I talk to uh, Avery at Facebook, who is still on MRV1 and can't use a lot of this stuff yet at the beginning of my internship, and I was like, hey, it runs great through the MapReduce interface. Do we want this? He said, absolutely, we want it. So I think uh, everyone's looking forward to this. Everyone sees that. Giraffe on MapReduce is sort of a rough fit. It was done for practical reasons because everyone already has spent their money on Hadoop clusters. They have one. They're using it. Why not leverage it to uh, run this class of problems uh, a little better than you can through MapReduce? So it was a great decision at the time. But uh, I think everyone sees the advantages and, and is behind it. So there'd be a lot of support. Yeah. Um, I was a little late, so you might have discussed sure. it early. But uh, right. can you comment on performance? Um, you know. You know, uh, it's funny, because hearing Bobby's talk earlier, he had mentioned that applications launch really quick on Yarn, and that's what I noticed, too. I found that uh, in, the, in the tests I ran, they weren't at the kind of scale I was running uh, when I first started working on Giraffe at LinkedIn, but uh, they were sizable enough, and I had run those tasks uh, often enough on the MRV2 uh, uh, interface with MapReduce and on MRV1 on the traditional Hadoop. And uh, in fact, they were real fast. They, they performed as well or better, I found. And uh, the task launch was real quick. So I, I think it's certainly completely comparable at this point. Uh, I wouldn't say it was radically faster or anything, but it was uh, completely comparable and at times a little better. And especially at, at startup, it seemed to spin up and get going just a little bit quicker. Yeah. Hi, I'm just wondering if uh, Google Pigail still uses MapViews or it has something Equivalent to Yarn? Yeah. Uh, what's that? that? Google Pregale. Is oh, yes. Map, map use based or it has a, well, you know, a We don't know. Uh, the, when we were doing Giraffe, I think uh, we had the Pregle paper, which was published. And since then, uh, I'm not really sure because they haven't said a lot that I've seen about, about what's happened since. So I don't really know. Uh, you know, for all I know, here we are saying we're loosely based on Pregle. Maybe we're mirroring it. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, I'd be curious to find out, but I'll probably never know. And um, so as a result, uh, all I can tell you is uh, I, I hope so, because it sure seems to have worked well for them. And I think in some form it's still in use is, is uh, my instinct. And uh, yeah, I, I don't really know much more than that. 
These answers are so useful. Anyone else? Very well. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, I will certainly be around later on. If you think of any questions, feel free to come up and uh, bump into me and let's talk. Thanks again.